Good morning, everyone. I'm Li Xinyu from Tsinghua University. In this talk, I will show you how to share direct-to-sales satellites like cloud computing. Space is a new business growth point for satellite networks. Operators can increase in revenue by using satellites to reach out to 2.7 billion underserved users on Earth. In the very near future, we can use our regular phones to directly access satellites to get ubiquitous services. As you have seen, SpaceX seller starting his 17 megabits per second download speed for Android phone. Direct-to-sell satellites can provide affordable, ubiquitous connectivity for our regular phones. Direct-to-sell satellite is not new be, uh, because it has been there for decades using GU satellites. GU satellites operate in the geostationary orbit at an altitude of tens of thousands of kilometers. Each GU satellite has broad coverage. However, our, direct, our regular phones cannot directly access GU satellites because the distant transmission is power hungry, slow, and noisy. Although we can use special purpose set phones to directly access satellites to alleviate this issue, however, these phones are not available or affordable to most consumers. Leo satellites are closer to users. It can provide faster network speed, lower energy cost, and most importantly, it can be accessed via more affordable hardware. Even our regular phones can directly access them. Traditionally, direct-to-sell satellites are most uh, monopolistic. Each satellite network operator, we call them SNO, they independently launches its own satellites to provide its own network services using dedicated devices. However, today's mobile network operators, we call it MNO, prefer to rent SNO satellites rather than constructing its own constellation to jointly provide direct-to-sale services for our regular phones. For example, SpaceX, AST Space Mobile, and Link have announced the lease agreements with tens of MNOs, such as T-Mobile, AT&T, and Vodafone. Why the change? Because it is beneficial for all parties. For MNOs, satellites are a scarce resource. Especially the Leo space is very crowded with thousands of satellites and orbital debris. There is no sufficient orbital slots for each MNO to construct its own constellation. And this situation leads to a more stringent and time-consuming orbital allocation by ITU and FCC. And so MNOs cannot quickly expand their business to everywhere. Additionally, deploying a Leo constellation is capital intensive. So building a dedicated direct to sell Leo constellation for each MNO is very uh, expensive. So they prefer to rent satellites from SNOs. For SNOs, although they have, um, uh, they have valuable satellites, but they cannot pri they independently provide direct to sell services to our regular phones because they lack the licensed spectrums. In 2022, SpaceX have applied these spectrums. However, these spectrums are mostly occupied by MNOs, so the ITU rejected its application and for the reasons of the potential interference and conflict. So SNOs instead lead their satellites to MNOs and MOs can use their licensed spectrums to jointly provide direct to sell services. By leasing their satellites to as many MOs as possible, SNOs can increase their revenue and return on investment. Last month, the regulators FCC just released a formal framework to enable collaborations between SNOs and MOs by allowing MOs to lease their spectrum to SNOs to jointly provide direct to sell services for our commodity phones. Why a multi-tenancy? SNOs and MNOs can leverage each other's resource for their own benefit. So this relies a win-win solution for everyone. How should multi-tenancy work? Ideally, each SO can lead its satellites to multiple MNOs for more revenue. Each MNO can rent satellites from multiple SNOs for broad coverage and low prices. How to enable multi-tenancy? The first option is the infrastructure as a service model. We can lead satellites like PIPES, which has been practiced for decades. It works pretty well in geosatellites because each geosatellite has broad coverage. However, um, uh, and this 
mode is preferred by operators because it is very simple and transparent. However, it is not feasible for today's LEO satellites because the following two reasons. The first is the incomplete serviceable areas. Uh, we all know that in this mode for a standalone LEO satellite, it requires the UEs and the ground stations concurrently resign in its coverage to enable services. However, the lower altitude of LEO satellites reduces each satellite's coverage and the service range of ground stations, thus causing this issue. Um, although we can use the inter-satellite link to network the LEO satellites to extend the pipe. However, they will still fill the second issue proposed by 4G and 5G stringent deadlines. In this mode, the transparent satellites should to relay raw physical layer IQ samples to the ground for further processing, such as demodulation and decoding. These processes have very stringent deadlines for the service availability. So, however, the uh, LEO op satellites operate at an altitude of hundreds of kilometers, so the long satellite to ground transmission latency can easily miss the 4G and 5G radio processing deadlines. To this end, we cannot use the infrastructure as a service model. To meet radio processing deadlines, we need to push part of the cell functions for local for on satellites for local processing. This results in a function as a service model. Does it work? Unfortunately, it doesn't work. In all bit cell functions are not easily shareable from the perspective of multi-tenancy. The local radio processing on satellites requires MNOs to lead to offload their internal cellular functions to SNOs satellites. This causes a functional split among UEs, SNOs, and MNOs for the fast-moving, intermittently accessible, and potentially untrusted satellites. This becomes burdensome during the two fundamental issues. The first issue is a tight functional coupling. For carrier grade services, the cellular network requires to establish a hop by hop stable session. If we push cellular functions on satellite, this hop by hop stable session will span UE satellites and the terrestrial mobile network. As the satellite moves, the UE needs to switch between satellites, so as the sessions for service continuity. However, for multi tenancy, each MO can rent satellites from multiple SNOs for lower prices or broad coverage. So, if the satellites serving the UE before and after belong to different SNOs, they are unlikely to cooperate due to the competition because no operator is willing to give up their users to others. So, the UE's services will be interrupted, and the SNOs and UEs cannot flexibly use different potentially competitive SNOs. Even the session can be migrated to continue the UE's service. The SNOs will face the problem of signaling storm because each satellite can serve thousands of UEs and for multi-tenancy each satellite may cover multiple MNOs. The satellites need to migrate per UE session states to other satellites thus resulting in signaling storm, and more MNOs more serious the signaling storm. The second issue is a dynamic many-to-many -many re service relationship among UE, SNO, and MNO. Each satellite can serve different MNOs during movement for multi-tenancy. For example, at this moment, this uh, satellite is serving a user of T-Mobile and it must configure its in-orbit functions to meet T-Mobile's requirement. And because the satellite may be untrusted, so the UEs, SNOs, uh, MNOs need to establish trust among these three parties to maintain a hop by hop suitable session. As a satellite moves, it begins to serve the user of AT&T, so it, sh it should reconfigure its in-orbit functions and re-establish trust relationship among these three parties. This is hardly scalable to LEO constellations from diverse SNOs. Large-scale movements can lead to exhaustive MO reconfigurations and highly dynamic trust establishment. Overall, the function as a service model is not feasible. The root cause is the hop-by-hop stateful session. So how to eliminate the hop-by-hop stateful session to achieve multi-tenancy? Let's make an analogy. What mobile infrastructure works like satellites in our daily life? 
and how do we share it? We have a vivid example ride sharing with Uber or Lyft. When we take a Uber, we only need to pay for the travel and we don't care which car we take because each car can take us to the destination. So ride sharing realizes a pay as you go self service. So if we replace the cars with satellites and passengers with UEs, each satellite can provide self service for UEs and each UE can access any satellite from any SNO and they only need to pay for the service. Thus, we get a pay-as-you-go satellite self-service to enable multi-tenancy. This is very simple, and this is just what we want. Mm, next, how to realize it? We propose MOSAC, a multi-operator satellite access via in-band control paradigm to enable pay-as-you-go satellite self-service. How does it work? MOSAC allows MNOs to generate tokens and distribute tokens to UEs. And UE can use the token as coins to request services from satellites. The satellites can provide, locally provide services to the UE without remote MNO's assistance. And the satellite stores the token locally, and when accessible by MNOs, they can use the tokens as proof of service to charge the MNO. It is very simple, right? However, there are three challenges we need to fix. Uh, the first one, for SNOs, how to enable self-service. And the second one, for MNOs, how to enable pay-as-you-go tokens. And the last, for UEs, how to access satellites with tokens. Let's look at the first challenge, how can SNOs enable multi-tenant self-service. To enable self-service, we need to deploy full-fledged seller functions on each satellite. So Mosaic deploy data and radio functions on each satellite. With satellite moves, it changes its radio frequency accordingly. To enable multi-tenancy, the functions must be transparent to all MNOs, right? So we should decouple the in-orbit functions from MNOs. These functions should be stateless, regardless of MNOs' states. So now, if there's no state on satellites, where are they? They are in tokens. MNOs generate policy embedded tokens and distribute them to UE. UE use tokens to request services from satellites. The satellites can parse the token, extract the policies, and provide carrier grade services. It looks very straightforward, right? However, what if the UE is malicious? Malicious UE may want to get free satellite services by repeatedly using a token. The challenge is that the satellite may be out of MNO's visibility. For example, the inter-satellite link are not available, and it cannot access the remote ground stations. So now the MNO cannot timely detect the misuse, causing losses to SNOs. How quick can we prevent this misuse? The key idea is same enforced one-time token consumption. First of all, although the satellite and the UE are out of MO's visibility, there is still one thing that the MO can control. It is the SIM card. The SIM card is issued by MO and is temper resistant. So we can use the SIM card as a local enforcement for multi one time spending. How to do it? We leverage the idea of cryptographic restrictive blind signatures from the offline cache system. Uh, so now let's look at the workflow of the token generator token consumption. In the token generation process, MNOs generate tokens embedded with policies and assign them. SIM card randomly generates metadata for each token and stores them in local memory. When the UE wants to consume a token, the satellites need to generate challenges to verify the validity of the tokens and the UEs need to use the metadata in the SIM card to calculate the response. After the token is successfully used, the SIM card will delete the corresponding token's metadata. So if a UE tries to multi spend a token, it cannot correctly compute the response, so it will fail. And in the token clearing process, Mossack let MNO perform as the ultimate defense in the extreme case, uh, that is when SIM cards are cracked, to detect the token misuse and penalize malicious users by adding them in the blacklist. And now we have reliable tokens, how to consume them. There are two requirements. Number one, local consumption to alleviate the dependency on remote MNOs. Number two, to minimize the amount of signaling. 
So we piggyback the tokens via inbound 4G and 5G signalings. The policy embedded tokens can be locally transferred to satellite. The satellite can locally enable services without interaction with remote MNOs, thus minimizing the amount of signaling. We prototype MASAC and evaluate using real satellite data and commodity 3GPP NTN protocol stack in Emerysoft. We compare MASAC with state of the art. Based on our evaluation results, MUSAC is beneficial to all parties. For SNOs, because MUSAC is using uh, inbound signaling and near stateless in orbit functions, SNOs are free of signaling storm, so they can transparently lead their satellites to more MNOs, which facilitates multi-tenancy. For MNOs and UEs, MUSAC self-service eliminates the dependency on remote ground stations and MNOs, thus achieving a uh, 100% serviceable area, so this allows MNOs to expand their business everywhere and allow UEs to get ubiquitous services. So as long as you have a token, you can access satellite from anywhere. In achieving multi-tenancy, MUSAC has marginal overhead. Its token consumption latency is very low because of inbound signaling. Existing SIM cards can host sufficient tokens, so they can be easily used to achieve MUSAC. Even if the SIM card is cracked in the worst case, although we are unaware of such attacks for commercial SIM cards in reality, MUSAC's token misuse time is still bounded. To summarize, we believe that the direct-to-sale satellite multi-tenancy is a win-win solution for everyone, but it is impeded by how by how stateful session in today's cellular network. This paper proposed MUSAC, which replaces hop by hop stateful session with pay as you go satellite self service. This makes our satellite as easily shareable as ride sharing. Looking forward, our work is still in the initial step. There's still a long voyage towards full fledged multi tenancy for 6G and beyond. So we call for the community's help to build a shareable infrastructure by the community and for the community. Thanks for your listening. I'm happy to answer your questions.